Hello, Brian Hilton back with another super cool slide reel tutorial. In this tutorial, we will change a condenser fan motor. The first thing that we must do is ensure the electricity is off. Reach up here and find the three wires that are coming from the condenser fan motor. Trace them out, figure out where they go, and either take a picture with your cell phone or write down where each wire went. The yellow one went to the capacitor, the black one went to the defrost board, and the brown one also went to the capacitor. Disconnect these wires, pull them out, remove the four screws on top of the condenser fan, Pull this out. Remove the set screw off of the hub. Take your hub puller. If you don't have a hub puller, you can do this with a, a, a pair of channel locks on the front and then, and then possibly another pair on the back and try to loosen it off using some WD-40. Next, we remove these four nuts that are holding on the motor. Now, when replacing the motor, it's very important that we, of course, get the, the correct horsepower as well as the correct RPM. But the other thing that really must be paid close attention to is the amp draw. Okay, so right here we find the horsepower, the amp draw, and the RPM. We match it up with one that's exactly the same. Are very very close to it. Next thing that's done loosen off your hub puller. Now it is, is it very important if you'll notice the shaft length on this is very long. The shaft length on the old one was very short. It is important that we pay close attention to the distance from our motor to where the shaft set screw was. We want to try to keep those as close as possible. So when I put this on, I'm going to try to approximate exactly how high that, that was up on our other shaft. Now, there's no reason to cut this off unless it's hitting a, the compressor or something inside. And the set screw, it's important to get it on one of the flats of the motor shaft. Don't put it on the round spot. Get it on one of the shafts, get it good and tight. Once it's tight, use your channel locks or crescent and get a good, a good quarter turn on it at least. The other consideration that you must take in, into account is most of these new motors are reversible. So once this is installed and electricity is, is fed to it, you need to ensure that the air is blowing out and it's not running the wrong way. Um, if it is running the opposite way of what you desire, all you do is get this out of the way now. You disconnect these. Now these are, are called idiot proof. They only go together one of two ways. Right now you've got the orange and yellow together, and the, um, the orange and brown, and the yellow and purple. So I disconnect this one. There's only one other possibility that how it will go back together because they're a male and a female. By doing that, I've just reversed the rotation of this motor. Now this is ready to go back in place. I'm going to put it back in and I'll join up with you here in a second. Okay, we've got the new motor installed, but just to show you an example of what we're doing. Most of the time when you replace a motor, a factory motor with a just a, a universal, the universal is going to have four wires where the old one had three. It's very simple. All we do, we match up the capacitor with what the motor requires, totally disregard the old capacitor. It doesn't matter if it was a dual run, as this one was, it is, or if it had its own. Put a new capacitor in. All you do is either brown wire goes to either side of the capacitor, like so. The yellow and black go to exactly where the yellow and black were before. In this uh, instance, uh, one of the yellows was, was uh, right here next to this yellow, and the black was over here on your defrost board on that uh, terminal there. Wire that up, 
Once again, once it starts running, ensure that the airflow is blowing strongly out of the top. If it's not, reverse the rotation um, as we showed you uh, earlier. Thanks for watching our tutorial. Stay tuned while I introduce the super cool slide rule. This is a must have. This tool will save you countless hours and a lot of time. Thank you. I'd like to take a minute to introduce you to the coolest tool in the HVAC industry. Historically, technicians have carried four or five different slide rules. You have one for R22, one for R410A, one for metal duct sizing, one for flexible duct sizing, and yet others for diagnostics or troubleshooting. Thankfully, those days are gone. This one tool will allow you to charge a system with R22 or R410A and either the superheat or subcooling method. The back cover contains required formulas, it has capacitors rules and practices, a wet bulb conversion chart, how to perform computations on series or parallel circuits, an electric heat strip guide, a complete system troubleshooting diagnostic chart, and how to troubleshoot compressors in TXV. Inside is packed with even more information. It performs sizing of both metal and flexible duct. It has the only direct reading conversion from smooth metal to insulation lined metal we've ever seen. The majority of technicians have never been taught that if the insulation is on the inside of the ductwork, you cannot size it with a regular duct calculator. It has step-by-step -step directions for determining airflow through a gas furnace, electric furnace, or an air conditioning unit. It has pressure drop multipliers for ductwork, as well as recommended velocities. And finally, the scanning of this QR code gives instant access to over 100 tutorials to assist the technician with every test and repair imaginable. You owe it to yourself, as well as your customers, to own this tool. It's less than $20, including shipping. The SuperCool will save you countless hours of frustration when troubleshooting units. Log on to our website and get one today, and I promise you will be a better technician tomorrow. And remember, every technician is only as good as their tools. Thanks for watching.